So we have the strongest indication that Labour will implement austerity if they are to win the next election. Labour will not turn on the spending taps if it wins the next election, bolstering the view of some senior Labour MPs that he is preparing to sign up to austerity-style public sector cuts. Starmer and Rees have not yet decided whether they will match the Tory spending plans for at least the first few years of a Labour government, as Tony Blair and Gordon Brown did going into the 1997 election. Nevertheless, Many shadow ministers expect that he and Reeves will choose to stick to the forecast spending limits, though they hope that any additional growth will be used to pay for public spending rather than tax cuts. So Starmer laid this out in his speech yesterday, and even Beth Rigby from Sky is questioning whether Starmer sounds like David Cameron. Keir Starmer's economic plan risks him looking more like a David Cameron tribute act than an heir to Blair. For years, we've all been hearing from Keir Starmer about how our public services are on their knees and things need to change. Now what we are hearing is that an incoming Labour government isn't going to be able to do much to fix it, in the short term at least. Laying it on thick when it came to the economic outlook, it was sort of inevitable that he dodged the question when it asked him if he could at least commit to not cutting public service, spending further after the next election. And all of it left me asking myself the question, vote Labour, get Tory austerity? Now Beth tweeted this, which was the question she put towards Starmer, just asked Starmer, can you at least reassure that you won't be cutting any departmental budgets after next election or some spending cuts on table? He talked about reform, but didn't hear him rule out more cuts to public spending under a Labour government. Reform, that famous word in politics, which is always bad, reform the NHS, that means privatisation. Reform public spending, yes, that means cuts. It's incredibly clear that Labour will implement austerity. They have groomed the public for years for saying they will be constrained by the Tories due to their economic failure. Uh, Starmer says that we are in a worse position today than we were in 2010. Given that Starmer is so scared of a contrarian position compared to the political consensus, there's no way he's going to stick his neck out to fight against cuts. Labour have taken on the economic orthodoxy of the last 14 years. Starmer doesn't even talk about redistribution, but rather he talks about growth. Grow the economy and use that to pay for stuff. That is trickle-down economics. Labour have pledged they won't increase taxes on the wealthy, which is strange because if you're going to bang on about debt and not having the money to pay for things, raising taxes on people who have loads of money brings more money in. But they don't want to do that. They've already courted businesses and donors. They're not going to upset them. Rather, their plan is discredited right-wing economics. Saying growing the economy in order to invest is kind of top-down. You know, it's, as I said, trickle-down because the state isn't actively redistributing, it's taking a step back and hoping things will get better by implementing policies that serve the rich. The defining purpose of the next Labour government, the mission that stands above all others, will be raising Britain's productivity growth. A goal that for my Labour Party is now an obsession. That's a big change for us. Having wealth creation as our number one priority, that's not always been the Labour Party's comfort zone. Take out Labour from the quotes, that literally sounds like a Tory manifesto. Wealth creation is a myth. You don't create wealth, it comes from somewhere which is off the back of workers. Now this next paragraph is so, so revealing. Talk to those around the Labour leader and they say the comparison isn't fair in regards to Thatcher. Starmer, they argue, isn't making a political argument to shrink the state and hollow out public services as George Osborne did in 2010, but rather Starmer and his shadow chancellor Rachel Reeves are acting out of economic necessity. No, don't worry, guys. The reason why we're doing austerity is different. Therefore, it's fine. I mean, the Tories made cuts to public spending because they're bad. We're making cuts to public spending because we have to. It's actually hilarious. How stupid do they think we are that we'll forgive Labour because they have a better reason to do it, which they don't, by the way. Austerity isn't an economic necessity. We've literally transported back to 2010. Starmer has almost single-handedly moved the political bait backwards. How definitely not depressing. Now we have a prominent Labour figure who argued against austerity back in 2021. The first thing I like to say is don't make the mistake we made in 2010 after the financial crash, which was to think that the way through this is to go for austerity and really severe cuts to public services. That was a complete mistake in my view. It stripped away our public services, stripped away our local authorities and what they could do, increased inequality massively. So who said that? Yeah, Keir Starmer. So Keir Starmer disagrees with himself, which 
It doesn't really surprise me because the only thing consistent about him is his inconsistency. Austerity has been the biggest failure this country has faced. It has never been about economic necessity. We are a poor and very sick nation. It's begging for medicine, i.e. investment. These things create jobs, money for the treasury and improve services. But we have a Labour Party that has aligned itself with the establishment and expects more austerity in the coming years, but at least it will probably be from a red rosette.